you died and you realized there was Allah and Islam is true, how would you feel in that situation that time? I'd say, wow. I think I won't hesitate to say this to Allah on the day. If he is going to burn me, he will burn anyway. I mean, there is no problem. What must happen for you to believe? That is not easy. If something had fallen from the sky or something, <laughs> I'm in a position to question even that right now. Uh, let me put it this way. If I said, if lightning strikes here, I will believe in Allah. I'd contradict myself. What do you need to believe in the next five minutes? In five minutes, a meteor or something should fall in front of me. I mean, something momentary should happen. What do you believe in exactly? I believe, I'm questioning, uh, like everybody else, I'm questioning. I mean, what will happen when we die? Where will we go? Will we disappear? I have doubts about these things. But you don't call yourself a Muslim, right? I guess, so... So then, can we define you as a deist? Maybe. I think everyone should have their own beliefs. What is your name? Bistami. Bistami. Bistami should have the Bistami religion. John should have the John religion. I believe in what's called apathyism. The exact description of it is indifference. I was a very pious person from the age of 14 to 22. I wouldn't miss a single Salah. I had a dream about the Pope. He had recently died. Then I began to pray due to this fear. I see Islam as the closest religion to me. But there are a lot of lessons I learned from Christianity, Buddhism and Hinduism. I'm still confused. I used to be a Muslim, but now I still am inclined towards Islam. I would say that I am searching for the truth. Think of it like I'm agnostic, living my own faith. We are going to ask you this. Let's say you die and you realize that Allah is real and Islam is true. Everything is exactly as the Quran says. Then, how would you feel at that moment? How would I feel? Nice. I mean, I don't know. I haven't thought about it before. I don't know, brother. I'd say... Wow. Would I feel regret? I even say it to my parents. You are very good parents. I am a very ungrateful child, but there's nothing I can do. I think I won't hesitate to say this to Allah on the day. If he is going to burn me, he will burn anyway. I mean, there is no problem. I have no problem with it because every day I'm grateful for the consciousness that Allah has given me. I'm very happy about that because I am walking on my own path. I know I will be in a very good place at the end of the day. I'd feel awkward. I'd say, all this stuff is real. There are many who believe and who don't, and I would like to see them both. I mean, to see non-believers or things like that, I would feel awkward. I would worry that we will suffer no matter what. I would tremble and be scared. There would be regret and fear. Of course. At some point, all those years, everything was real. I didn't believe it and questioned it all my life, but Allah is forgiving after all. That's how it's written in His book anyway. Well, shouldn't you believe to expect forgiveness? Because the worldly test is over now. I mean, Allah would say, everything is over. You didn't believe me. It's like you don't believe in something. And in the end, you see everything is, is real. I'd feel odd. I would feel regret thinking, I wish I had done all these things and so on. Well then, let's ask the second question. What should happen for you to believe that Allah really exists? That is not easy. Now we live in the 21st century. If something has fallen from the sky or something, I'm able to question even that right now. I know I will only believe when I feel something inside. That's why. I need to see it with my own eyes. It's like this. If I said, if lightning strikes here, I will believe in Allah. I'd contradict myself because the strike of lightning is a coincidence. I pass through here all the time. Sometimes there are policemen here, sometimes they're shooting a movie. I will say it is chance or coincidence. Even if you say you could have stood aside. So there is no reason for me to believe in Allah. There is no need even. I don't know. For me to believe something big should happen. What I mean by something big is something like legendary or a miracle because the creator makes miracles after all. What do you need to believe in the next five minutes? In five minutes, a meteor or something should fall in front of me. I mean, something momentary should happen. We received some common replies about this. One of them is, I need to see to believe. It's not believing. From my point of view, it is knowing. It would be contrary to the test of this world's existence. It is irrational to see the Creator here in person physically. Why? Because we live in a universe made of atoms. Naturally, we'd say, are we expecting a Creator made of atoms so that we can see Him? It is a contradiction to see the Creator is free from matter physically, which also contradicts the test. Secondly, for instance, this can be said, I won't believe unless the Creator is scientifically proven. However, this is another contradiction. Why? What do we understand when we say science? I mean, what is the definition of science? Especially materialistic science. If we can experiment on something in a controlled environment, if we can observe it physically, if we can test it, we call it scientific proof. The Creator we believe in is already the Creator of the matter, and He is free from that matter. Naturally, you do not look for an artist in the art itself. You do not look for the author in the book he wrote. With his characteristics, you can find the author. Therefore saying, I don't believe without scientific evidence is also a contradictory statement. The third response is usually, there has to be a miracle, which you also said. 
in this regard, I am asking this. Maybe everything is a miracle, but we got so used to it that we don't spot the miracles anymore. For instance, when you look at a drop of water, which is sperm, a person comes alive from that drop of water, or think of a seed buried in the soil. Huge trees come out of that seed. The seed carries the potential of that huge tree. When you look at soil, tasteless and colorless, fruits in unimaginable colors can grow out of it. We are so used to seeing this kind of miracle that we no longer see it. Apart from these three responses, a fourth response is exactly what you said. What is it? Something must make sense. Because let's think of a palace with a thousand gates. To enter the palace, I just need to find one of the keys to the gates. Let's say there is a person in a car who is blind, deaf, and unintelligent. And this person, facing hundreds of thousands of different crossroads from Florida to Houston, continues the right path each time and reaches there. And this doesn't happen once. Imagine a journey with constant back and forth. He always chooses the right road, the right direction, and always finds the right one. In that case, we say, a blind, deaf, and unintelligent person cannot do this. Surely there is someone who has the willpower. There is someone behind him who controls the car. When we look at the particles, when we look at atomic particles, it does everything, like a human being, by choosing the most reasonable and right way. For example, it comes to the human body and goes into the eye. In the eye, it can work at the best capacity, or it goes down to the liver. It functions best in the liver. And that same particle goes to a tree. It does its work the best and goes into an animal. It can also work in the body of that animal. In other words, it travels from one place to another, just like a factory worker. And this happens all the time. Just like I am looking for someone behind that person in the car, I'd say there is one with all his willpower, intelligence, strength, and life, who controls and manages all these particles. If a single key opens the gate of that palace, aren't these truths enough to enter the palace of Islam and become a Muslim? What do you say? Maybe, why not? That's the thing about possibility and agnosticism. But we know the truth in this situation. We have found the logical deduction. I told you this is about existence, otherwise we wouldn't be here. I listen to everyone, people from all religions, atheism, etc. Everyone. But I try to stick to the truths that I know to be true. That's kind of deceiving. Because there is this, pretending to be a Muslim so as not to end up in hell, is the most ridiculous thing in the world. But I don't say, believe with pretending. I say this, we have found logical evidence, a key, and we can use it to enter the palace. There is a verse in the Holy Quran that describes the regret as follows. When someone dies without faith, they will say, I wish I were dust. There is a huge issue of regret at the end of this matter, and we have logical evidence that can save us from that. Then I say, there is the key, let's enter that palace again. Since we opened one gate, we can open the other gates together from inside. This is an invitation. Exactly, I invite you. Nice, thank you. Um, if I must be honest, from the beginning to this moment, rather than becoming a Muslim, I don't know how many minutes have passed, but for instance, our discussion is a lost time. It's in vain. Instead of this lost time, instead of arguing over what we should believe or what we think about religion, it is more reasonable to try to prevent someone from cutting a tree or whatever if someone is hurting somebody. Brother, I'm there every day in the middle of the palace. I am a Muslim in my heart. I am so close to God in my heart. I have no problem with him, but I do not need to name it Quran or I do not need to call it Islam. I am so close to my religion in my heart. I am very comfortable with it. God is in my heart. I have so many keys in my hand too. I try thousands of gates at the palace every day, but I still haven't found any lock to open with them. So what do you say? Is this the day of your return? It's up to me. I mean, I must come back willingly and I shouldn't quit after I come back again. I'm waiting to feel ready. Maybe today when you go home, you decide to take a step. Maybe, why not? Then I see you as a Muslim now. Maybe. And then there is the fact of death before us. We will separate shortly. Maybe you will Never die, maybe, maybe I will die will too. Maybe a will hit us in two seconds. It's possible. There's no benefit to staying outside when you can enter the palace. I found logical evidence, a key. If opening one gate is enough to get in, and if we can open other gates from inside, then wouldn't it be better to do it like this? So here's what I think. If I believe now, for the sake of argument, I still won't be believing from my heart as some parts are still missing. I mean, in my current state, I still need the support of reason. Even just a little bit, I don't know. I mean, I would be a so-called believer, I won't be believing sincerely, and the Creator will not forgive me for that. There is logic on one side, and there are emotions on the other. If emotions overwhelm logic, one makes mistakes, not just in this subject, but he, she continues to make mistakes in everything. Emotions are already something like a prisoner of humans. So let's enter the palace together. We will open the remaining gates together from inside. I'm always available to talk about this, but the important thing is to enter through that gate today with the key. What do you say? Let me think. Reverting to Islam is not a simple matter. It's a huge thing, actually. I'd say taking that step here, before experiencing the regret in the hereafter, is a reasonable step. I don't know, I can't make this decision suddenly, because I must think by myself. I thought about worshipping. Why does he need such a thing? 
I mean, not necessarily need, but more like, why would he want it? We can answer this now. If it will help you to open that gate, I'll tell you right now. It may help me open it logically. What is the concept of worshipping? Allah asks people to worship for the good of people. For example, when a doctor gives a medicine to a patient, he does not need the medicine, that medicine is for the patient. Because mankind is also very much inclined towards worldly occupations in this world. As you know, humans are very inclined to those occupations. Allah does not want people to get lost in this worldly rush. He doesn't want people to forget their self-worth or get lost in depression. So He provides the deed of worship and five times of prayers a day. And this way, He tries to change people's perspective on the universe so that they don't forget their own value, that they were created for eternity. He grants worship as a reminder. Like yoga movements, very relaxing. So I think we opened the second door. Then only 998 doors left. I say there is no God apart from Islam, but for instance, there might be another creator. He's doing some things to us in a different way. I can prove it too, no problem. I can prove the only God is Allah. Just like Islam describes, you surely know of Surah Al-Ikhlas. It is the Surah that ends atheism and proves Islam. Say he is Allah one kul huwa Allahu ahad. Allah is one, indivisible. When I look at the universe, think about the movement of those particles we've talked about. If we think of the whole universe as grains of sand, a field of sand, everything has the same structure, that is particles. I say there should be one who controls uh, and manages all of these with the same there law. Is more than one creator. When we explain this issue, you spontaneously eliminate several religions. The verse clearly proves Tawheed. It goes on to say, Allahu samadu, Allah, the sustainer needed by all. Everything needs to be created in the beginning and at the same time everything needs to be managed because we had already proved the logic behind the movements of the particles in every step. Then look, Allahu Samadu, this is a piece of evidence that corresponds directly with the universe. What does it say next? Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He has never had offspring nor was he born. This has the same reason behind it. The one who is eternal, who is out of time, can't have a past. Because if there is no time, there is no past. Then we say, he has never had offspring nor was he born. As he is free of matter. Walam yakun lahu kufu an ahad. And there is none comparable to him. And he is the one who created all matter. Naturally, there is no one like him. The author and the book are two different things. Those are different concepts. Allah is nothing like what He created. But you will find Him with deductions and attributes. So, with a third key, we open yet another it gate. It seems we will open 1,000 gates here with you. Let's try it. Let's try it too. Let's try the reversion to Islam too. Do you remember the Shahada? <laughs>